Advanced Algebra, Chapter 2, Lesson 6, and we're going to look at uh, some more families of functions, and we're going to look at stretches and shrinks, and then reflections. And actually, reflections we've been doing, uh, or you'll see the connection here as we talk about them later, uh, that negative sign that changes the uh, value of the, the uh, function from opening up to opening down is actually called a reflection, but we'll, we'll talk about that in this lesson as we go forward. So a vertical stretch or shrink is going to affect the y values. Remember the vertical axis moves up or down. So if we affect or stretch the y values, that's going to be a vertical stretch. And that's going to show up as a number in front of the absolute value symbol. Now there are cases where it shows up on the inside. We'll talk about those briefly, briefly, but we won't do a lot of work with those this year. But the number on the outside is a vertical stretch and that's going to affect the slope of the rays. And it's going to show up, like we talked about, 90% of the time in front of the absolute value. And what that does is it changes the slope of the rays. So the rays of the absolute value are no longer this one that's in front of the x. The slope is now this a that is on the outside of the absolute value sign. Now, this, if this a number is bigger than 1, that's going to be a stretch, which is actually going to narrow the v. If you think about a v, my fingers were the v, and you tied a string on each one, and together pulled or stretched that up, that would actually pull my fingers together as you pulled that up. So that even though it's a number bigger than 1, and you're making it bigger, it's going to narrow those v's. And actually, that should make sense, because that number is the slope, so that number is getting bigger and bigger, so the rise over the run of 1, is getting a bigger and bigger so that slope gets uh, steeper and steeper. If that a value is between 0 and 1, meaning it's a fraction, then that's going to shrink and that would be like taking my v and pushing something down inside. You're making that slope, you're making that rise smaller and the run bigger so that's going to widen or narrow the slope, I'm sorry, widen the v but make the slope uh, less steep. So that's going to show up, and that's how they're going to show up. Now the reflection, as I said, is what we've looked at already as a negative sign, and it shows up in front of the absolute value. And when it does that, remember, it turns it upside down. But instead of saying that from now on, we're going to apply the mathematical terminology. And a negative sign makes the y values the opposite of what they were. If there were no negative sign, I would take a 2, let's say, but now I'm taking the opposite. So all of the y values that I would have gotten are now the opposite. So that's going to be called what we say reflecting over the x-axis. And you think about the x-axis, if you think about a value like this, all of these y values that are positive are going to be reflected over the x-axis. And so it's going to look like this. So this x-axis becomes something like a mirror. And all of these points are reflected over that x-axis. So the negative sign is a reflection over the x-axis. We're going to summarize everything we've learned then about these and in this table that we have here we have the vertical and horizontal translations that we talked about in the last lesson and we can have both going on and now we're going to add to that this negative sign which will reflect the values over the x-axis and then this a value in front which would be a vertical stretch or a shrink. So you can combine all of these into one equation and so you can have a lot of transformations taking place on one parent function with all of these taking place. Now I do want to make one very uh, important distinction here, one very important note. When you have a negative sign in front of a the letter A, the negative sign and the A are two different things that are happening to the equation and to the function. The negative sign is a reflection the A is a stretch or a shrink. They do not go together. So when you're given an expression like this, let's say A is equal to negative one half absolute value or X, and you're asked to describe what's happening to the graph, if this is not a vertical shrink of negative one half because the negative is not part of the shrink. There's actually two things going on here. The negative sign is a reflection over the X axis and the one half is a vertical shrink by a half. So you'll need to keep those separate. Do not combine those into one transformation of the graph. All right? So A will change the slope of the rays. The H will change the X value of the vertex, moving it right or left. The K changes the Y value of the vertex, moving it up or down. 
and then the negative sign changes all the y values to their opposites or what we want to say is a reflection over the x-axis. So all of these together will be the types of changes that we'll see in functions and these are the changes that we'll see all year long. Every new function that we introduce, every new function that we talk about, we'll talk about the parent, we'll talk about some algebraic things we can do with the parent, but then changing that graph by moving it right or left, moving it up or down, uh, reflecting it over x, stretching or shrinking, all of these same letters will show up for the rest of the year in every type of function that we look at because these always are the same exact transformations of every function regardless of what the function or the parent looks like. So I'm going to do one example of the type of problems that you'll have in your homework and then uh, I'll do another video where I'll do a few more examples and then uh, we'll go on from there. So a homework problem might look like this where you're asked to describe the transformation of the parent function and here's the equation. So what you want to do is always work from left to right and doing one thing at a time, describing each thing as it happens. All right, and we won't be graphing these, but then if you did, you could use these to graph the function, but we're just gonna describe it. So first we have the negative sign. So the negative sign is a reflection over the x-axis, and that's the way I need you to describe it. Reflection over the x-axis. That's what that negative sign means. The four is a vertical, and because the number is bigger than one, it's a vertical stretch. And you want to put by how much? By a factor of four. Okay. Then the number inside is a horizontal shift. And because it's positive, it's going to shift the opposite way. So that's going to be a shift to the left five. And then the sign outside is a shift up and down. And because it's negative, it'll be down. And so it'll be a shift down four. So these are all the different things that will happen to the parent function y equals x and how they see you or how you see those in the equation.